In this video we are going to take a look at how to implement player movement to the top-down type of game in Unity and the movement we have will have smooth rotation. I'm Peter and welcome to the Sunny Valley Studio tutorials. The assets used in this tutorial came from Kenny assets so I strongly recommend you take a look at their site. Link to, links to the site and to the project's files you can find in the description. Let's look at our setup, a sprite ground, an obstacle that has box collider and rigid body, and our player that also has a rigid body 2D and box collider. Now we are going to implement a similar script as before, but this time we are going to make this player movement uh, a smooth rotation movement. So let's cre create a new script, player movement. Let's open it up. Okay. So, first of all, as always, we need to create some variables. So let's do it right now. There's only new variable is rotation speed. We have horizontal input and vertical input for getting the input from the Unity. Movement speed to uh, control how fast our player is and the rotation speed that will control how fast our player rotates and the rigid body to the reference variable that we will use to perform movement okay so in start we are going to get the reference for the rigid body 2d and we are going to change the variable name to rigid rb 2d because unity has some uh, issues with me calling this rigid body to the name. Okay, why is it not working? Rigid body to the rigid body. Okay, now good. Now we need to get the input itself. So we will copy the function from our last video. Get player input. It will take the horizontal input and vertical input as input.getAxisRaw. So you still may, might remember from our tutorial, it gets a 0, minus 1 or 1 without smoothing. And we will get the movement function. So move player, we will use rigid body to the... Okay, I see what was the problem. Rigid body to the dot velocity equals transform dot right so we will use uh, the tr uh, our sprites transform so our player transform dot right position because our player is rotated to the right as the starting position and we will clamp the result why are we doing this well because we basically want to only move when we push the up arrow or the W key and that is because we will be using rotation so right now nothing happens because we have not yet implemented uh, not yet called those two functions so let's call them we will get the player input in the update function as before and we will use the fixed update to move the player around because we are using physics engine for movement. Okay, so now script is done. We need to add it to our player. So let's add it here. We have movement speed, let's set it to two. And rotation speed, we are not currently using this because we have only the movement implemented. And let's play it. And you can see we can only push the up arrow on the W key and we can only move forward as the player is facing. Let's implement the rotation itself. So the main aspect of this video. So now we need to create another method for rotating our sprite. So we will call a rotate player method to rotate our player. Here we can see that we are calculating a float value of rotation and it will be a horizontal input with a minus sign. So let's delete it for now. 
the times rotation dot speed so the speed of rotation we have implemented before and we're applying it to the transform dot rotate function that will simply rotate our sprite around the z axis so the axis that is facing from the screen to us and the value of a rotation is the rotation calculated using the input of our player. Well, where should we call it? Where well, basically we sh uh, can call it in fixed update, but also we can call it in update. It doesn't use uh, physics to rotate, but to be consistent, we can have those two together. So let's go to the unity and we have set the value of rotation speed to five. Let's remember I have deleted the minus sign. So now I push the right arrow and our player is rotating inversely. So that is why we need to have the minus sign before the horizontal input value in the rotation calculation. We add the minus before the horizontal input value to cancel the inversion of the input. And now you can see we push right or left arrow and rotate accordingly with the given speed. And that is why I have implemented the clamp method on the uh, movement. So you don't go backwards, you just rotate and go around. Having that done, we can delete our player and we will use another prefab from the project that I have provided you with a link in the description. And we have the tank prefab. So let's look at the tank prefab. The tank is made of chassis, so the uh, moving part of the tank, and the turret. So why have we divided the tank? Well, basically, the tank itself will be moving. The chassis will be rotating during the movement, and the turret will be rotating with our mouse position. So we'll, we'll be uh, facing, always trying to face position of our mouse. So the tank player parent will have the rigid body to be moved with freezed rotation on Z axis, but you don't have to, you don't need it. And the gravity scale of zero. And that's the only changes that I have done to the rigid body 2D. The chassis will need to have the box collider 2D because we will be rotating the chassis. So the chassis need to be colliding with other objects. Tank player prefab, uh, tank player parent will not be rotating. Its rotation will stay on zero, zero, zero. It, it will be only moving. And the turret has only sprite renderer. We are going to make things a little differently right here. We're going to make a player tank movement script. And this script we will attach to the tank player Okay, and open it up. This time we are going to implement the movement logic in the player tank movement uh, script. And then we will get the input in another script to divide responsibility between two scripts to be a little more op uh, object oriented friendly. So let's implement the variables that we need. Let's delete this and we have the variables we have the movement speed as always rotation speed tank so this will be the rotation that we have previously used to rotate the player and now we have speed rotation for the turret itself because we are rotating the chassis and the turret we have a reference variable for tank body and tank turret and that is because we need to move those separately or rather rotate them separately. And we have our rigid body reference. We need to get those references in the start method. And here they are. We have rigid body 2D. So let's rename it to RB2D as the unity will throw some informations that we are hiding of reference values for rigid body 2D. So we are getting the component rigid body 2D. We are getting the tank body as the transform.find. 
So we are just looking through the children of the transform that we are currently at. And this is the this is the tank player. And we are finding them by name. If you ensure that the names are correct, you will always find those two transforms. And we're doing the same for the turret. We need to implement three methods. First of all, we need to have the player movement, just as before, we're making rigid body that velocity and let's change this to rb2d that velocity equals tank body dot right because again we have our player facing right at the start of the game so that is why we are using transform dot right input value that will be passed to the player movement and it will be the input value from the unity and movement speed that we have defined also here. Next, we are going to create the rotation of our tank itself, just like the uh, rotation method before. We are just using the uh, tank body dot rotate instead of transform dot rotate, uh, just like in last example we are using tank body that rotate to rotate the chassis around while we are giving it input okay last thing we need to do is to implement turret rotation we are going to use another method that is a little bit more interesting so here in rotate tank turret we are passing a direction so basically it will be a position of our mouse with z axis set to zero to keep everything in one uh, one plane and now we are using quaternions so quaternions are a little bit difficult to understand but what are we doing here is calculating the desired rotation by using quaternion dot look rotation which works a little bit like a tangent 2 but it can be used in 3d space if we pass the direction to the object our object will be facing this uh, other object passed as a direction but here we are passing a forward ve vector and the upwards vector so passing vector uh, factor that forward so basically z axis ensures that we are calculating the rotation on the x y plane so the 2d plane that we are interested in here is the commented line that we will get back to and the third the rotation is being set to quaternion rotates towards so it uh, rotates our uh, it calculates the rotation according to the quaternion that we are starting from so the third rotation basically the desired rotation and the max degree delta that is basically the smoothing so how fast we are rotating and here we are using the rotation speed turret times the time dot delta time the input will be taken in another class to divide the responsibility of the uh, different uh, classes we are uh, we are creating the player controller that among other things can take input for the player so now we have two scripts we can fill in this movement speed let's say two rotation speed five and turret rotation speed will be a little bit higher it will be 200 let's go to the player controller in which we'll we are going simply to get this uh, input from unity but also we need to reference the other script that we have created so let's implement the starting variables again we have horizontal input and vertical input to store the input from unity mouse position that we will be getting from the mouse and movement script reference in the start method 
we just need to get the movement script reference. Okay, and now we need to get the player position. I will paste this method here, and I will explain what's happening. Basically, we get the horizontal input and vertical input using input.getAxisRaw. That's the standard way of getting the values. Next, we want to get the mouse position. And mouse position is received using a camera method that transforms position from screen space into world space. So screen space is the space of your monitor. So the bottom left corner is 0, 0.00 and top right corner is the point with coordinates of your monitor resolution. And this space is the space where we get the input from the player. So the touch or mouse pointer and we transform it into world space. So the world space is the space where uh, game objects are placed. And we are passing the input that mouse position, but not just that. We need to pass the X and Y coordinates of input dot mouse position and camera dot mine dot near clip plane. And this is because we need to get the we need to know the distance between the camera and the point where, where we are getting the input to have a valid coordinates because input dot mouse position doesn't have Z axis and the reading from just that will be invalid. That's why we need to pass camera.main.nearclipplane only if we have orthographic camera pointing directly top down on our plane. So we have now the mouse position. We can debug.log it to check it. And we want to delete the z axis value because we are working on the uh, zero z coordinate. Okay, great. Now we have our input. We need to get the input. In the update method we will call it next we will call two methods on our movement script first will be rotate tank turret that will take mouse position as the input value and rotate tank body that will take horizontal input and we also need to move our tank we will create fixed update method and call in it movement script dot move player using vertical input okay but there is one issue here right now if we go to our tank rotate tank turret we have our input value called direction in our rotate tank turret but is it really a direction actually we are passing a mouse point position so we are passing the endpoint of our direction vector so let's change it to endpoint and we still need the direction to pass to local rotation uh, method. So we will pass endpoint minus tank turret dot position. So this should help. Let's check out it in Unity. Does it work? Let's play. Well, not exactly. Something is off. We need to make another change in our code. We have to uncomment our special line called desired rotation that adds to z value 90. Why is it so? Well, I'm no expert at quaternions. As soon as I get there, I will release a tutorial on them. But for now, you have to trust me and I have to trust the code. Let's get back to Unity. Let's play. And our tank turret is finally moving with our mouse and is pointing in its direction. So great. So let's see it all in action. We can move forward and backwards. We can rotate the tank and we can rotate the turret into in the, the direction of our mouse. Great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, please subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you soon in the next tutorial. Thank you very much. Goodbye.